value. The initial condition and the uh, derivative of initial condition, I use WKB approximation. So if I guess wrongly, it works well, then exponentially grows. And if this one is just a little bit smaller than the actual eigenvalue, and if it's a little bit larger than the actual eigenvalue, it blows down way. And right on the x value, it goes decay. So in another way of saying eigenvalue problem is a separate matrix. Find the separate matrix uh, for these two uh, blowing behavior. It works for any potential. It doesn't need to be x squared. It can be x cubed. It can be anything. And it works for complex plane. And the major count is is limited to one dimension. Shooting in two dimensions is almost impossible. It's almost impossible. I did it once, but I don't want to do it again. OK, here is the survey. I did this calculation for nine potentials. Uh, from quadratic all the way up to the quantic and pair uh, combining them. And some of them have been studied already. For example, this has been rigorously proved is real, and we all know this is real because that is the uh, Hermitian one. And this is a Smelga example. For example, this uh, Casey Chang's uh, study example x squared plus x cubed, we have only one pair of overlapping values. I'm only working with these overlapping values. So uh, I did not, of, of course, I can impose my um, eigenvalue problem anywhere I like. But in this overlapping region, has the advantage is when g is small, say g equal to 0, I know I start with the real eigenvalues which is x square eigenvalues. For g very, very large, I know I'm going to end up with the real eigenvalues, which is the, uh, the strong coupling one, just the cubic alone one. So that's why I'm only working with this overlapping regions, uh, slope wedges. This one is including real axis, so numerical calculation is very simple. And this is the spectrum. I can energy and g from 0 to 10 and uh, we calculate uh, nearly uh, 10 eigenvalues. And whether this is right, whether my numerical method is correct, we need to do a consistent check. One is when g equal to 0, I should recover harmonic oscillator. That means over here, I should have harmonic oscillator. And when g is large, I should have igx to the cube. Well, IGX cube actually can be calculated from IX cube by a scaling trick, which is uh, interesting also introduced. So this is the scaling trick. If we want to solve just the bandit Boucher potential, but with this coupling constant G here, we can scale it out. Say we define Y to be that and lambda, and now we have the exact bandit Boucher potential with epsilon equal to 1. And we can easily numerically calculate, uh, using shooting method, calculate all these eigenvalues. And that means the eigenvalues for ig x cubed would be those ones. In We can even check on uh, Bender's paper and, and using a ruler to read those out. <laughs> Multiplied by g to the 2 fifth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And this is the comparison. For x squared, I use a circle. This is the harmonic oscillator, and they start with the harmonic oscillator nicely, and they approach to the uh, cubic potential nicely. You can almost cannot see much of the deviation. So it's a, it works very well. OK, we just repeat this eight more times. Actually, uh, not eight more times. It's uh, 12 or 13 more times for other potentials. Hermitian 1, x squared plus gx to the fourth. 
uh, surprisingly, for this Hermitian one, you can only the Stokes wedge you choose always including the real axis. You cannot solve this Hermitian one in the complex plane away from the real axis. It doesn't work. Uh, this one, of course, it has to be real and is real and approaching correctly to the lower ones. La uh, a higher one is slightly worse, but it's, it's approaching. If G is even larger, it will be uh, yeah, this, better. This one we did also with the method I explained this morning. Yes. But this was uh, 35 years ago, so we didn't have uh, even a laptop. <laughs> <laughs> Right. <laughs> and now combine x squared and minus x4 because minus x4 the Stokes wedges cannot include the real axis. Actually, real axis is the boundary of the Stokes wedges. It's actually called anti-Stokes line. So therefore, it's either up or low. But this actually equivalent. These two ones are equivalent. So we can do it in either. Uh, region, it's no longer real. It has some funny thing happen here. Although the ground state looks fine, the first one is fine. Actually, the first eight one are fine, but first nine ones are fine, but the tenth one start to. If we zoom in, this is what happened. The ninth, first nine one seems to be go on forever, but the number 10 and number 11, they merged. <coughs> they become complex country pairs. But uh, the Johnson and the Mateo showed that it is totally diplomatic. Well, Johnson and Mateo? Not either. No. It, it, well, it is PT symmetric. It's a PT symmetry, but it's spontaneously but breaking. But it's it's broken. It's broken. So if you don't like Carl's Higgs model, it will give you only four real eigenvalues. My one is slightly better. It's nine real eigenvalues. <laughs> Twice as good. <laughs> well, what is interesting in this case, from the point of your anal analysis, is that, of course, it has the same perturbation theory as the other one, mm. to the sign. Mm? Mm. The same perturbation theory as yes, the, the perturbation cannot say anything. Cannot say anything so, about so this. So you, you may wonder what's the difference, okay? Except for the sign of the couple of Sure, and yeah. it has to do with the. There's a discontinuity across the cut, but yeah. there is also a contribution. Can I finish what I'm going to say? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> that except. So what is the difference? The difference is that. Uh, when G is negative, the theory is not Borel summable. That's right. So yes. the Borel sum will always give the one we are, we are used to, which mm. is the positive sign. Right. If you want to determine what happens for the other sign, you have to include barrier penetration effects. Mm -hmm. So in addition, you have to go to hyperasymptotic expansion, and you have a bunch of exponential, one over G, terms which will add to perturbation theory and correct for the imaginary part mm -hmm. when it is uh, when it is complex. Right. Uh, okay. That yes, I haven't done that analysis yet. Yes. But but, uh, but yeah. so that if you, if you because the summation of perturbations is the only thing you can expect right. is the analytic continuation mm -hmm. uh, of the usual result, which will be complex. Okay. Right. We have the imaginary part. We know the imaginary. Right. Okay. But then the in, there will be incident and contribution which subtract a piece of the imaginary part, and then several incidents on all together. And it's very much like the double well potential, which we have analyzed completely. OK, I will, I will look at this to, to really to see if we can. But the point is, the eigenvalues really are complex. That's no. not a fake. They, no, no, they, no. They no. really are. Yeah, but they are, not, they are not complex in the way which is obtained by the continuation from the other problem. You see, sure. uh, <laughs> there would be, the, if you calculate just by continuation, they'd be complex even for asymptotically small coupling constant. And we know the imaginary uh, That's part. right, yes. Uh, if, we, if we do a perturbation, then, well, basically, if we 
for this guy, if we draw this picture on the other side, it's immediately everything breaks, right? But the the minus g x to the four does not show that. It's it's slightly better than that, which is uh, which is. Uh, it's not immediately everything breaks. We still have nine possible stable states. For small coupling. Yeah, for small coupling. OK, uh, my understanding would be uh, they have different boundary conditions. So underneath your continuation, it will, um, when, they, when you cross the, the Stokes, this is not Stokes line of that, but it's going to be Stokes line of this. That would be uh, dangerous. Okay, um, that is the third one. Number four, this uh, Smilga studied potential. Uh, I do this in two pairs of wedges. I will do this first, and they are real. Pretty good, and it, they are approaching to the strong coupling limit very well, and they start from harmonic oscillator, of course, very well. For the lower ones, Smilga already discovered is, is this is what Smilga calculation up to this region, about this region. It is complex. Uh, it is going to symmetry breaking. In this picture, the purplish dot is the numerical calculation. Other colors one is the strong coupling limit. So they approach the strong coupling limit when g above 1. And from here, actually, you can see this point is not the symmetry breaking point. Is actually a symmetry restoration point. After this point, all the eigenvalues are real. So we, if we want to zoom in to see how this breaking occurs, this is a bit, little bit zoom in. I will label my eigenstates by the eigenstates counting from the strong coupling ones. So this is my zero one, first one. So they touched at about 0 0.077. And the second one can go live alone. So this is the second. It was the ground state of the harmonic oscillator, but it will become the second exciting state of the strong coupling one. This one is a stable one. So we have one pair merge, one real one, one pair merge, one real one, two pair merges, one real one, number 10 is real. So we have one, one, Two. Let's continue. I start from ten. One pair merge. One, two. One, one, two. One, one, two. Seems to be a pattern. Let's go deeper. So we stop at twenty-one. Uh, at twenty-one, I have one, one, one. <laughs> no pattern. <laughs> it's complicated. It's, mm, a breaking can happen anything anyways. OK, uh, I can show you their more fancy breaking. Uh, for this one, uh, x cubed plus gx to the fourth, I think it will be similar uh, to in the Philip's talk. It will be Carl's asking question. But Carl asking the real one. This is the PT version of one. This actually is a pretty good one. No symmetry breaking is real. Yeah, but you can shift yeah. this ah. one. You can make a translation at next to get rid of it. Yes. And then it will generate the next square. Yes. And yes. 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 So it's expected to be a real one. But cubic with a minus x to 4, now because of the minus minus 4 has a different wedges, now they have two common overlap intersection regions. Uh, for the first one, the symmetry actually breaking. And breaking differently, but there all seems to be a restoration point. About this seems to be everything start to be real. Uh, if we zoom in, this is how roughly how it works. Some of them go in and some of them from very top down going here. So it merges with a very, very high values. This is not number one, number two, or number zero, number one merge. It could be number 10 merged with number 535. This is complicated patterns. 
For lower ones, actually, it's good. It's a real one. So the real axis this time is not real axis. Above the real axis, it is symmetry breaking. The lower one is unbreaking. Is there a way to predict it? Yeah, I'm going to show you. Yes, I try to find a pattern. That's why I do this survey. Cubic plus quantic, one including real axis, a pair doesn't include in the real axis. The one including the real axis, no good. Uh, zoom in, it's a similar like uh, Smilgas one, very similar pattern. This is breaking that way, and we have restoration point. After that, everything is real. We know we always have restoration point because we know the strong coupling limit has to be all real. But whether it's breaking is, yeah, I take that back. That, that's <coughs> not, not very uh, accurate statement. Uh, we do not know whether we have a critical value. We do not know whether the breaking is started immediately from high up or after a certain value. The lower ones this time is nice, well behaved. So it's another and a second case of lower one. <laughs> right. This is uh, another way around. Okay, um, positive x to the 4 with minus i, I x5, we have two pairs, and this time the, re the, one, the upper one is good, and the lower one is not. And the, the merging is also rather funny. I don't really sure how this merger, it could be the, uh, the harmonic oscillator one all go this way and uh, higher one go this way, they don't even connect. Not even one state from make the, the from zero limit to weak coupling to strong coupling limit. It could be, but I, I'm not sure about that. Uh, finally, minus x to the four with ig x to the fifth. This time they have three overlap regions. And the first one are good. Second one, no. Uh, this time the breaking is sort of spontaneous, but it's actually not, 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 not spontaneous. This is how it's happened. Zero and one, and that one make the way to the strong coupling, and some of them converges. So it is in the, in the, it seems to be a cone shape, a uh, wedge shaped region, but the breaking get, getting uh, wider and wider. And the lower ones are good ones. No symmetry breaking. OK, that's the survey. What can we, what the pattern we can find? OK, here is the table I have shown you. For the nine different potentials, they have, some of them have two pairs of wedges, some even have, the last one have three pairs of wedges. Some of them are real, some of them are complex. And uh, what can we find from this? Okay, um, if I just pick a particular one, the last, very last one, very complicated one, have three pairs, somehow I use a higher version of Mathematica and they stop giving me three colors, it's normally two colors, and it seems unchangeable. Okay, now this time I'm not only plot the boundary of Stokes wedges, but also I show the center of Stokes wedges. So the boundaries as before using the dash lines and color coded. And the centers I use solid lines, also color coded. So this red solid line is the center of this red wedge. And this blue solid line is the center of this blue wedge, okay, and etc. And some of the lines coincide, uh, coincide with the imaginary axis. And in earlier I showed the top pair has real eigenvalues, no symmetry breaking. The bottom pairs, no symmetry breaking. And the middle ones have symmetry breaking. If we, when I plot this solid line, you can see there's no solid line in the middle. So when these solid lines, the centers of Stokes' wedges are inside 
that seems to give us some real spectrum if it's not inside PT symmetry breaking and inside real spectrum. Now let's see whether that's a generic. This is just the one of the nine. So this is the table uh, for all the nine potential I study. If they're both inside, it's real. No symmetry breaking. In, in, real. For this case, it's the borderline. One of the center lines actually in the border because x squared, the center is real axis, which is the border of the minus x to the four potential. So this, if it's a border and in complex, in, in, real, out, out complex. Now you can see with this, um, at least for these many examples, uh, have we have, I have a conjecture, yes. If both anti-Stokes and the center of Stokes lines in each power inside a something wedge, then the spectrum is real. If it's one outside or one on boundary, it will be PT symmetry breaking. I do not know whether this is a necessary or even sufficient condition. That seems to be. This is a really interesting result. And it's interesting because the Stokes wedge is really only determined by the highest power and the potential. I mean, the ultimately. Yes. The ultimately, ultimately behavior, yes. You know, if you have an x to the 4 and an x to the 3, it's only the x to the 4 that determines the, the, the wedge in which the eigenvalue problem is posed. Yes. That's right. Nevertheless, you're saying that there is somehow an interaction between that, that determines whether the whether the is going to be broken. Yes. Right. And there is another example, rather trivial example, also support my conjecture, is the Hermitian one. If you have Hermitian polynomial potentials with only even terms, because only even Hermitian one can be interpreted as PT symmetric. The other one, X alone, doesn't. So that one, all the Hermitian ones, the Stokes wedge is always there's a pair including the real axis, the even one, the even Hermitian, uh, uh, even Hermitian uh, powers. So therefore, this conjecture also agree with the Hermitian polynomial potential should have real, ax real spectrum if you impose boundary condition on real axis, which of course is a trivial result. Uh, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Is, is in no, it's not really matching for any given G. As long as G is non zero, no, only the highest power, like no, Carl no, pointed out, my matters. No, it's okay. Only harmonic oscillator solutions are exponential multiplied by polynomial. As long as you go to x cube, you don't have exponential multiplied by polynomial solution no, because I that's not exactly I solvable. Have something in mind. If you have uh, those are exact solutions, so it only exists if there is a matching between left and right exponential form. Mm. If it is not, so you cannot make uh, uh, So this uh, may be the reason why these things are feasible for, for in, in it could be. Yeah, uh, I just, your last comment, uh, I, I may have misunderstood. If you take the potential minus x squared plus x to the fourth, mm -hmm. it, it has a perfectly real spectrum. That's right. Well potential. That's right. Uh, how That's right. Uh, that, is, that means my conjecture can only be uh, sufficient, cannot be necessary. Because my, uh, minus x squared in, in this picture is not PT symmetric. Even Ix yeah. is not PT symmetric, Ix alone, because it doesn't define a pair of PT pair wedges. Yeah. 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 Y
That's right. There, there are examples outside this. So they can only be uh, uh, sufficient, cannot be necessary condition. Any other questions? So let's thank uh, Xinhai and all the other speakers today. And uh, tomorrow we.